Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's stand to our feet. Hallelujah. As we give thanks. Hallelujah for what God has done. Yes, God. Awesome that he allowed the angels to be camped around your house on last night. What did you do on last week that he kept you from Monday to Friday? The answer is nothing. We can't beat God and the things that he do for us. So he tells us to present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him which is our reasonable service. And so on this morning, let's show him how much we thank him for being a God of yesterday, today, and forevermore. Lord Jesus Christ, we love you this morning. You are truly the best thing that ever happened to us. We thank you for dying on the cross, and we thank you for filling us with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. We thank you for your mercy, your grace, your everlasting love that you give to us on day by day it is nothing that we do oh god but it's just your goodness and for that we give you the praise we give you the honor and we give you the glory on today we're going to open up our mouths and give you the praise because you're just so good you're just so kind you're just so merciful even though we got things that are troubling us sickness might be in our body bills might be overdue loved ones need to be saved but in spite of that you still deserve every hallelujah and so we make the devil mad this morning we give you the praise right now we command our mouths and our hands to give you the glory what shall it profit a man if he gained the whole world and lose his soul, 
we decree and declare the day that the blessings of God will come upon us, that they will overtake us. Oh God, that you will lift up a standard against the enemy. We plead the blood of Jesus right now. They come out against every demonic force, against every work of the enemy that is set to enter refuge on this morning. May the grace of God and his sweet communion and the blood of Jesus arrest everything that is not like him. May he save, may he deliver, may he set free on this morning. Oh God, bind our attitudes, loose our minds so that we can praise you. Get the glory from the start to the finish. Overtake us with your anointing. Oh God, break the yoke of the enemy. In the mighty name of Jesus, bless the praise team, bless the musicians, bless everybody in the house on this morning. Set us free to praise you this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, give the man a word so he can feed us. Oh God, that the souls might run to the altar and that they may open their mouth and say, what must I do to be saved? In the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, somebody needs a prayer answer on this week do it for them somebody needs a prayer answer on this week do it hey yes lord yes lord yes lord yes lord yes lord yes lord yes hey yes lord yes lord yes to your will yes to your way Yes to your will. Yes to your way. We trust you. We trust you. We trust you. We believe you. We believe you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, Tanya. Yes, Lord. Travail for yourself this morning. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. It's so. It is so. It is so. The Lord is saying it is so this morning. That what you need is so. That what you've been praying for, it is so. The healing in your body, it is so. The healing in your mind, it is so. The increase spiritually, it is so. The increase financially, it is so. We seal the prayer by saying in the name of Jesus. Put your blessed hands together. 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 Open your blessed mouth. Open your blessed mouth. Open your blessed mouth. Open your blessed mouth. Praise the Lord, everyone. Today's scripture reading will be reading from the 139th Psalm. It says, O oh Lord, thou search me and know me. Thou knowest my downsetting, my uprising. Thou understandest my thoughts are far off. Thou compassest my path and lie down for and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but O oh Lord, Thou knowest it all together. Thou hast beset me behind before, and lie down thy hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, and I cannot attain unto it. Whether shall I go from thy spirit, or whether shall I go flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into the heavens, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take my the wings of the morning, and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall behold me. That's the reading of God's word. Let it be a blessing to you in Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Can we give you praise on this morning? Hallelujah. 
was nobody but God. Was nobody but God. It was nobody but God that saved me from my sin, and He with the Holy Ghost and fire. Now I'm all right. Yeah. Who did it? Who did it? It was nobody but It was nobody but It was nobody but That saved me from my sin and he filled me with the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost and fire. fire. Now I'm Holy yeah, God. yeah. Who did it? Who did it? Hey, it was nobody but it was nobody but God. It was nobody but. I was afflicted. afflicted. He delivered me, delivered me. and he freed me from the chains from the chain. that were binding. And he gave, gave me, me joy. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Who did it? Who did it? Nobody it was nobody but oh, God. It was nobody but God. Oh, it was nobody but when I was afflicted, he delivered me and he freed me from the chain that was binding and he gave me Who did it? 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 Who saved you? Who raised you? Who delivered you? Who set you free? Who brought you out? Who brought you through? Nobody! 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 
your party. Who paid your bill? Who saved your family? Who kept your children? No party. No party. No party. No party. No party. My mother couldn't do it. My father couldn't do it. My husband loved it. But he couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. Nobody but you. Nobody but you. Nobody but you. Nobody. Nobody. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Who brought us through COVID? Who brought us through COVID? Some of us got sick. Body wrecked with pain. But the doctor said no. God said yes. God said yes. God said yes. He made a way. Out of the way. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Do you know? Do you know? Who did it? Who did it? Who did it? Who did it? Who kept your mind when you could have been cuckoo? Who kept your mind when you could have been crazy? Who healed you from every sickness? Who healed you from all kind of diseases? Nobody. 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 Nobody, 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 he filled you with the Holy Ghost and fire. The Holy Ghost and fire. I'm glad I got it like the Bible says. I'm glad I got it like the Bible says. So glad I got it like the Bible says. Holy Ghost and fire. Holy Ghost and fire. Who did it? Nobody but God. Who did it? Nobody but God. Tell your neighbor. Nobody but God. Tell your neighbor. Nobody but Tell the mailman. Nobody but God. Tell the milkman. Nobody but God. Tell the mayor. Nobody but Tell your governor. Nobody but God. Tell your neighbor. Nobody but God. Tell everybody. Nobody but God. Tell everybody. Go and tell them. Go and tell them. You are the wrong. You ought to run. Nobody run and tell that. Run and tell that. No, 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 nobody. No, 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 nobody. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Nobody. 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 Who did it? Who did it? Nobody. It was nobody but. It was nobody but God. Can I get a witness? It was that saved me from all my sins. And he with the Holy Ghost and fire. Now I'm yeah. Who did it? Nobody but God. Hallelujah. Praise him. Praise him. No, 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 nobody. No, 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 nobody. Nobody but God. Nobody but God. Nobody but God. Nobody could do it. Nobody could do it. Nobody but God. Nobody but God.
my God. Nobody, nobody, nobody but God. Come on, give God praise. Hallelujah. If you know nobody but God did it, come on and give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many know God to be good on today? We serve a great and mighty God. Hallelujah. The song says, Lord, you've been so good. Look at your neighbor and say, Lord has been good to me.
to me. So many words you want. So many words. So many ways you
It's turning around for me. Yes, Lord. It's turning around for me. You may feel like you're giving up, but it's turning around. It's turning around for me. I don't care what you're struggling with. Guess what? It's turning around for me. It's turning around for me. Turning around for me. He's turning around for me. Around for me. Yes, God. Around for me. Around for me. It's turning around for me. It's turning around for me. It's around for me. Around for me. Around for me, it's turning around for me. Turning around for me. Turning around for me. Turning around for me. It's 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 turning around. It's turning around for me. It's turning around. It's turning around for me. Come on, give God praise. If you believe that it is turning in your favor, I said it's turning in your favor. Speak to that mountain and tell that mountain to get out of my way. I don't care what your finances are looking like. God is making a way of escape for you. It's turning around for you in your situation. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Encourage somebody on this morning and say it's turning around for you. Encourage somebody else and say it's turning around for you. Hallelujah. Yes, God, hallelujah. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. Yes, God, yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It won't always be like this. Would you do something for me? Just stand up and look at somebody and say, not much harm.
I want to go on, but I feel somebody just needs to get up and turn around. magnify the Lord for his goodness and his mercy. We thank him for all the wonderful things he's doing. Thank him for turning some stuff around. I don't know about you, but I'm taking a miracle home with me. By the time I get home, by the time I get to work tomorrow, by the time I get to the doctor's office, by the time I check my bank account, 
Somebody there should just say Baba time. of the Lord is in this place. Yes, God. There's a sweet anointing walking through the congregation. Yes. If you're in the need of it, you better get up and say, I need it now. presence of the Lord is here, I promise I will not keep you long to those that are watching via live stream. The same anointing that's going on in this congregation is trying to knock on your door. Yes, sir. Let it in. Let it in. Even yes, those sir. that are watching through live stream, that are watching through Facebook Hallelujah. Live, we say to you, praise the Lord from the main sanctuary of Refuge Temple Church here in the heart of the city with the people of the city in his heart, inviting you and yours to be a part of this worship service. God is doing some great things. My God. As a matter of fact, I feel it working right about now. He's been good. We won't hold you long. Turn with me for just a few moments of your attention. Amen. To the book of St. John, the Gospel of St. John, chapter number four. And we will just read one verse to your hearing. That is the Gospel of St. John, chapter number four, beginning at verse number seven. Stand for the reading of his word throughout the sanctuary. It reads on this wise to your hearing. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. And Jesus said unto her, give me a drink. There cometh a woman of Samaria, Samaria to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me to drink. Before you sit, turn to someone on your left and to your right and just say, You need a drink. <laughs> uh, I see your minds wondering what is the bishop talking about today? Water, water makes up a majority of our body weight. And it involves in many of our important functions. Uh, this includes the flushings of our systems. And, amen. Not only that, it begins to regulate our body temperature. And it even helps with our mm, mental capacity to think. Without water, you kind of get a little bit fuzzy. Water is important. It helps with saliva. Water. It regulates your body temperature. It's important for us to drink water. Amen. It stays to keep hydrating us. It protects us. It protects, and I should say, your tissue and your spinal cord and your joints. 
It is the fluid that runs through it that gives it the ability to have mobility so that you can dance and shout and praise God. It helps to excrete all of the waste and perspiration in, in our body. Water is important. Here it is. It helps to prevent constipation. And uh, you're saying, Bishop, don't talk about that in church, but <laughs> some of y'all need to be a little bit more regular. <laughs> I, I'm not being carnal. I'm just talking health process. It aids in your digestion. It helps to nutri it helps to, uh, to help nutrition to be absorbed in your body. And you're going to like this part, Water. It helps you lose weight. <laughs> it, it improves our blood oxygen circulation. I'm, I'm not talking about anything. I'm not talking about Gatorade. I'm not talking about Pepsi. I'm not talking about all that. All that. I'm talking about water. My hand goes up. How many of you had to drink some water today already? How many are you going to drink some more water before so water is important? It helps to fight off illness. It helps to boost our energy. It aids in the cognitive functions. It helps our mind to work even better. It even does this. It helps to help your mood. I can tell when y'all ain't had no water. I'm preaching hard right now. It helps to protect. It helps to keep your mood. It helps to improve your mood. It helps to keep your skin looking bright. You need a drink. It prevents all all uh, I say overall it prevents hydrate dehydration. If you've ever been dehydrated, you know how sick you can literally be. Helps us to be dehydrated. It has so much for you to drink. It does and helps so much. Am I right, Doctor? Amen, Doctor Keel. It, it's important that we understand the importance of drinking water. The bottom line of it is that you have to drink but so many gallons of so many ounces of water per day to help us to understand that we need it to be healthy. Here it is in this particular story. It's talking about water. Water. It's important. I know that some of you say, I don't like the taste of water. Water don't have no taste. <laughs> <laughs> can, can I just be kind of, uh, can I just be realistic? My mother would not drink water. She didn't like water. So my father had to trick her to drink water. And what he did was he bought her watermelon. <laughs> so that she could drink water. Those of you that are drinking, eating salads, salad and lettuce is nothing but and you're saying, Bishop, I came here to church, and you're talking about water. 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 Here it is. When we begin to look at this chapter, and we want to talk about it just for a few moments, Jesus is in chapter 4. It's telling us a great story. Here it is. Jesus leaves Jerusalem, and he's traveling to go to Galilee, a region that is what about the now the northern part of Israel. Amen. And most Jews ref refuse to take the shortest route because it goes through the center of Israel where the Samaritans live. Now, in order to get there, they have to go through it to get to where they need to go in Galilee. But instead of going all around it, they, some people went straight through it or tried to avoid it. Amen. This is where the Samaritans live. Most of the Jews in the history of the Bible refuse to take the shortest route because it goes through that center of Samaria. And they say, they, you need to understand this. This is important because they hated the Samaritans. Now, hate is a powerful word. Amen. They didn't just dislike them. They didn't just want to be not be around them. They hated them. Is there anybody you hate? And the reason why I ask that question, because if you do, you can't make it to heaven. The Bible says you got to love everybody. 
Man, look at somebody and say, that's right. Hey, man, you got to love everybody. Amen. Even those that hurt me, yes. Even those that despitefully me, yes. But here it is in the Jewish custom, they hated the, the Samaritans. And I'm not making this up this year. Even today, I'm not talking about biblical times. I'm talking about even today. Even today, the Israelites often drive around the same area because most of the Palestinians live there now. And they're anti-Jew. Amen. Here it is. Jesus, however, does not take the Samaritan bypass. Amen. Because of the coast going by the coast or beside the Jordan River, he walks right through the heart of the region of Samaria. At noon, he's there and he arrives at Jacob's well, uh, well outside of Sikar, and he finds himself in a village that's about 30 miles north of Jerusalem. He puts, it puts him about a day and a half journey towards where he needs to go. His mind has been made up that he has to get to Jerusalem, but before he goes, look at somebody say he's on assignment. And here it is. He finds himself. He puts himself at about the day, about a half of an hour, a day and a half away from getting to Galilee. And he sends his disciples, those followers of him. He sends them to buy food while he sits at the well and waits. Now, I need you to hold on to that world well and wait. And don't leave it in your mind. You hold on to it just for a minute. The well now is more than 100 feet deep today, but it probably be measured somewhere around 250 feet deep in about A.D. 67. Here it is. So it may have been even deeper at the time of Jesus' day. Jesus doesn't get anything to drink. He does not get anything to drink. Since the custom of the day was to be y o b, what does that mean? I know you knew it. Bring your own bag. But in this case, bring your own bucket so that you can lower it down and get the water that you, oh my God. You need a drink. Here it is. He finds himself lowering. He, bring, he does not bring a bucket. He did not have one, but he did not get a drink because he did not have a bucket. Usually, it comes to the well. That the, the women come to the day, or should I say, come towards the well in groups, amen, in the cool of the morning. Amen. Or the evening. I was at, I had a house in North Carolina and as I was in there, I had my own lawnmower. I pushed lawnmower and I find myself getting up early in the morning, had about a little over a little less than an acre of land. And in the hot of the summertime, I would take my cup of water and I'd get my lawnmower and I'd start pushing in the heat of the day. I'm pushing, I'm pushing. Hey Amen. I did that two times, then I found somebody to mow the lawn. Because the sun was too hot in the middle of the day. Here it is. They find themselves, finding themselves coming in the cool of the day, amen, to gather and to water, have water. Not only was it there, they were, it was a place of gathering, amen, both for chores. They did not only for chores, but for social events. They found themselves talking to one another. This is what I bought. This is the material that I got. This is what I'm fixing for dinner. This is what's going on. They would have those meetings, amen, and begin to share with each other. But certainly the heat of the day, in the heat of the day, there was something that was different at this particular day. There was a solitary woman that shows up that after the sun had begun to rise so hot, Amen. It was burning up in the middle of the heated part of the day. A solitary woman shows up with a bucket in hand. Amen. Y'all not listening to me. While she comes, Jesus sees her walking to him and he positions himself to say, can I get a drink? Amen. It's important that you understand that Jesus waits for you. No matter what you're going through, no matter how difficult it is, he is waiting for you to turn your life over to him. Matter of fact, he will go all out of his way to put himself in your pathway so that you can see him and know he's God. 
Somebody ought to say amen because you had no mindset about going to church. You had no mindset of being saved or being delivered. You had no mindset of worshiping God. You were trying to overcome the hangover from the night before. But look, God brings you into the house because he has something he wants to give you. And you don't know what it is. He's about to turn your life around. Amen. Jesus asked her for a drink. It is shocking. Amen. For several reasons. And I'm going to talk about it for a few moments. Amen. It's shocking that Jesus points out to this woman and say, give me a drink. Amen. It's hard. Jews typically do not talk to Samaritans. Amen. They avoid having any conversations with them. He does not say a word to them. The Jews teach that Samaritans and everything they touch is rit ritually unclean. Amen. So they understand. So drinking water from a Samaritan would make the Jew unclean, forcing that person to undergo uh, spiritual uh, 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 spiritual purification, if I could say it, and in, in the rituals and understanding that God has to clean them up. And then there's rabbis that don't usually speak to women in, in public anyway, considering it improper, improper behavior. Amen. I'm a rabbi. I cannot talk to a Samaritan. Now, in fact, I can't talk to any woman in public because it's not right. And I want you to know that we are in the position that we see and understand that because we think that when men and women talk, it's got to be something physical or sexual. Oh, I'm preaching hard right about now. You think it's some mess going on because they're taking the time to talk. And yes, in some cases it is. But in most cases, it's not. It's just somebody talking about the goodness of the Lord. But it's difficult at points and times to have conversations. Amen. Because you've got to cover yourself from the hearsay and the hearsay. Oh, man. Did I say that out loud? Gossip will kill you. And I'll throw this into the pit so that you can understand it as I make my gumbo. When you throw this into the point, the enemy has a new tactic, and the tactic is character assassination. He wants to destroy your character. Wants to destroy who you are. What you Bishop, why are you all wound up this morning? I'm getting ready to go to Holy Convocation. I don't know if I'm coming back. Here it is, character assassination. Amen. They see you living holy, but they'll talk about you anyhow. They're talking about it because they can't live up to the standard. And if you fall, that says they can rise up. But you can't take my place because it was given to me by God. Somebody ought to scream up in here. Amen. Here it is. The woman recognizes Jesus as a Jew. Amen. She looks at him and be able to talk just like sometimes. Amen. When I speak, they ask me, am I from the north? And I say, no, I'm from Holly Hill and Cross, South Carolina. Amen. Here it is. No matter how I am. And then when I go to New York, they say, you, you from the country now? No, I'm from New York City. <laughs> I'm a man without a home. It is. There's something about the dialect. There's something that comes out of his mouth that helps her to understand that there is something about her dialect that says she's from a northern region. Amen. Are y'all listening to me? Amen. She's saying that he's a Jew. He's something different about the way he enunciates or pronounces his words that tells us that he's different from everybody. Amen. She sees that perhaps it's because, and I say this, it's because of his accent or the words that he uses. He does not say fitna. Amen. He says fixing to. There's something about him that changes their mindset, that woman's mindset to know that there's difference in him. I'm preaching today. So he, she says she can't believe he's asking for a drink. Amen. Sometimes people know the rules better than you know the rules. 
They know that once you say that you're saved and sanctified, they know that there's an aspect of how you're supposed to carry yourself and they hold you accountable to it even though they're doing wrong. But you saying that you're saved, it's because they have been watching. They know about grandmama. They know about auntie and those that have been saved. They understand how you should walk. How you should talk. When people see you, do they recognize that you've been with God? Do they know that God lives in your life? Oh, somebody ought to say, yes, they do. Here it is. Amen. He, she could not believe he's asking her for a drink. If you only knew the gift, he says. If you only knew the gift. Oh, God. If you only knew the gift God has for you. Hey man, you were, and what he's speaking up, he's saying to her in John chapter 10, I mean, excuse me, for chapter 4, verse number 10, Jesus replies, he says, and it would ask me, and I will give you living water. That's Jesus' reply. She said, ask me, and I'm going to give you living water. Somebody needs a drink. Amen. It's not just regular water. It's not Fiji. It's not, uh, 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 I don't even know the rest of them brand. Walmart, Aquafina, Deer, Deer Park, Le Blue, Sam's brand. All the different, where is all this water coming from? Amen. He says, when he looked, he says, if only a drink, he begins to tell us that he would give you living water. Simply, I need to talk about this for a few moments. Living water is important. Living water means running water. It is from a stream or a river or a spring or a well that is fed by an underground water table. It's not water from a pond, amen, that has been sitting. It's not water that comes from an underground chasm, amen, that stores water in a plastic kind of coolery system that when you dip your bucket in it too, you can pull it up, amen. It is a different kind of water. Jesus isn't talking about water at all. He's not talking about the brand names. He's not talking about the water. Amen. She is talking about, or she begins to think that he's talking about some magical water. Peter Popoff. He's talking about some magical water. <laughs> some magical water. Some water that does some magical tricks for you. She's thinking that she's talking about some magical water. Or, but Jesus isn't talking about that kind of water, but he's talking about a water that can cure and cure your and thirst of eternal thirst quencher. He's talking about an eternal thirst quencher. That when you drink of the water of Jesus Christ, it's a whole new thing. Oh, I wish I had a praise I up in here. But Jesus is talking about something that's going to provide eternal life, eternal life. Amen. I'm talking about water. That when you drink it, you know you've been drunk. Uh-oh. Here it is. Amen. This eternal death with you, it has the ability to give you eternal life. Amen. Not only not of that, but you would also have the ability to escape death. Because I'm not talking about physical death, but spiritually you can live forever. That's what this church thing is all about. Amen. It's not about how beautiful you can put on a dress, how much you can beat your face. It's not about that. It's whether or not you have made up in your mind that you want to live for God. So that you can hear him say, well done. Thy good and faithful servant, enter thou in to the time. My Lord, have mercy. This woman eventually realizes that Jesus is a holy man. She figures out that Jesus tells her that she's been married five times. Amen. And continuing to live with a man who's not her husband. Amen. It's not someone that she has gone and did her recog he done his recognizance. Amen. He does not go asking people questions about your past. 
Amen. But the Holy Spirit, the God that he is, that knows the beginning from the end. Amen. He understands that he's in control. Amen. And he begins to look at her. Amen. And begins to read her future and her past. Amen. He begins to tell her that you have been married five times. Amen. And you continue to live with a man that's not your husband. And if I could just take a moment to just go back in Jewish law. Amen. Jewish law limits a woman to three divorces. Amen. But this Jew had already consummated her sorrow and I've already began to look at it. She had already had about five. And in some places that we would call her a serial sex pot. Amen. She found herself in a position where she had never been in before. Amen. This man was telling her everything about her. Amen. Every Everything about her past, everything about her present, uh, and telling her what she was doing. Uh, and I want you to know that in more freezes, mm, uh, it was uh, in this thing that we begin that no respectable uh, rabbi would come to be around her. He would avoid her at every cost. Uh, amen. But Jesus uh, has a different perspective. Uh, and I need to push pause right about here. Uh, and the reason why I'm pushing pause uh, is because God looked beyond all your faults. Uh, Somebody ought to scream yes in here. And he sees your needs. He sees what you understand. I don't care about your past. Amen. But I'm about to give you a drink of some living water that's going to change your whole attitude. Change the way you walk, oh God. Change the way you talk. Change the way you move. Amen. And give God the glory. I have come to call you not who think you are righteous. I, I've come to call you, ha, not you that think it's all about how you serve them. Ha, amen. But I've called you, ha, but I've called those that are sinners. Ha, amen. That need to repent. Ha, and if I could take time right here ha, and you're saying, well, preacher, ha, I already got the Holy Ghost. Ha, amen. Well, preacher, I go to church. Ha, amen. I try to do right by everybody. Ha, but the truth is that we all have sinned uh, and come short of the glory of God. Uh, and there are times in our lives uh, that we got to repent of sin. Uh, somebody ought to scream, Lord, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, somebody ought to scream, Lord, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the words that came out of my mouth. I'm sorry for the attitude that I have. I'm sorry for the what I stole that didn't belong to me. I'm sorry for how I think. I need your word to come into my life. Amen. Jesus comes for the repentant saint. In Acts chapter 2, it tells us to repent of our sins and you shall be saved. That you to be baptized uh, in the water. Uh, and I want to talk about the water. Uh, it's about purification. Uh, it's about dropping down uh, into a watery grave uh, and coming up a new creature uh, that when you shake off the past, uh, shake off your problems, uh, shake off your situations, uh, the Lord I serve uh, is a great God. Uh, that's why you got to get dipped. Uh, amen. You can't be sprinkled. That's why you got to go down in it, where it covers all of your body. And when you come up, you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. There's something about going down. I need some folk in here that have gone down in the name. I'm not talking about the titles. I'm not talking about the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, but I'm talking about going down in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And coming up in the blood, I want to let you know that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall come. Confess that he is Lord. If you know who he is, throw your hands up, throw your head back, and say, Jesus, I praise you. Say, Jesus, I glorify you. Say, Jesus, 
Jesus. I walk with you and I talk with you. See, everybody can't call him. Everybody don't know him. But I need the folk that know him to stand on your feet and tell the Lord, thank you. Come on, church. Amen. One more thing before you sit. Look at somebody and say, I know him personally. And he knows me back. Amen. The woman refused. Amen. Rushes back to her village after Jesus had talked to him and talked to her and said, all that she had done in her life, he begins to empower her and tells her, I'm going to give you a drink of water because of who I am. I'm not just from any ordinary, a rabbi, if I please, but I'm God incarnated, wrapped in flesh that came down from 40 and two generations, and with you in mind. That's what I like about God. He brings it to us individually. He know all the hell you've been through. He know all the problems you've been in. That's why he came to your house. He stepped over your brothers. He stepped over your sisters. He stepped over the road you were and came to your house and filled you with the Holy Ghost. Somebody ought to say yeah. And when you got there, they thought you lost your mind. They thought that dog crazy. They shut the door on you. But the devil is a liar. You kept on living because you know where he brought you out of. Somebody ought to say yes. He brought me out of the fiery clay. He set my feet on a rock to stay. He gave a song of his praises. I've been created to worship. He made me over. I don't smell like cigarettes. I don't smell like liquor. I don't smell like sex. I smell like a town of God. I'm saved, sanctified, holy no fear. I am baptized. Go find three people and say, you need a drink. <laughs> you need a drink. James, you need a drink. I'm not talking about Jack Daniels. I'm not talking about Charlie Walker Red. I'm not talking about Hennessy. I'm not talking about Alice. <laughs> I'm not talking about none of that stuff. I'm talking about a good drink of God holy water. Amen. That comes through your body. It comes up and swells up. And out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Somebody ought to scream up in here. five more minutes and I'm going to sit down. Put me on the clock, Junior. Here we go. Here it is. This woman that has had an experience with Jesus and this is the piece that you have to understand. You cannot be in Jesus' presence and go back looking the same. You can't. You can try to fake it if you want to, but those of us that have the spirit of discernment know that you're not. This woman rushes back after meeting Jesus. She rushes back to her village. Everybody in her village knows about her. They know her lifestyle. They know everything that she's done. They know every one of her men because it's a small community. He knows every last one of the problems that you had. You know what I'm talking about. Sometimes it's the people that know your past that does not recognize that you've been changed. And they are waiting for you to fall along the wayside. Oh God, but I prayed for you. 
that the God you serve will keep you. Oh, God, look at somebody and say, he going to keep you. Here it is. She runs back and she rushes about back to the village and she tells the people about Jesus. Amen. The man that she met at the well. Amen. Jacob's well. She runs back and tells him how they had met and what he had told her. She begins to tell him about all the things that were going on in his life, in her life. Amen. She begins to tell him. Then she says, come meet a man. Amen. I look at somebody and say, come meet a man. Amen. Come meet a man, I God, uh, that understands all of your problems. Uh, that is a holy man. Come meet a man uh, that's going to give you peace even in the difficult time. Come meet a man. Uh, amen. And when she comes, she brings and she invites all uh, the villagers to come to where Jesus is. Uh, amen. Jesus was only passing through. Uh, he was going towards, uh, amen, Galilee. Uh, but when these men uh, and these women of the Samaritan kind, uh, amen, came to him, he stays, uh, amen, about two more days uh, and begins to minister to him. Uh, and the importance of it is that God has given you uh, the Holy Ghost not just to let you run uh, and shout and dance, uh, but it's to tell everybody, uh, amen, it's about to share it with everybody uh, during the time that Jesus is there. Huh? Amen. He convinces many of them. Huh? Amen. Indeed that he is the savior of the world. Huh? Amen. When you hear him speak, huh? you know it's God. Huh? The first thing that the people, huh? amen, these people hear from Jesus huh? was that a Samaritan woman's testimony. Huh? Amen. These are they, amen, huh? that tell the story huh? about what God has done in your life. You got to tell your testimony. Stop trying to hide it. Stop trying to be scared because people are going to look at you bad. But tell the story about what God has brought you from. Some of you have been drug addicts. Some of you have been all kind of addicts. Amen. Some of you have been in prison with a chain locked around your waist. But look at you now. He's a free God. God has freed you. Tell your testimony. Huh? This is remarkable enough huh? that the woman's testimony huh? was not only represented huh? in her area, in her era, huh? but it's represented in ours. Huh? You got to tell your story huh? about how God picked you up huh? and turned you around. Huh? You got to tell your story huh? because you took a drink, huh? amen, of the anointing of God. Huh? You got to take a drink of it huh? and it proved that God is in town. Huh? Amen. Once a few people huh, had met Jesus, huh? they invited him to spend huh, an additional time in their town. Huh? John chapter 4 huh, and verse number 40. Huh? He gave many the ordinary opportunity huh, for Jesus to teach huh, and to preach the gospel. Huh? Repent of your sins huh, and be baptized. Huh? Every one of you, huh? he came with a purpose. Huh? He tell them that I'm coming to bring back. Huh? I'm coming to bring you unto my own. Huh? I've come for you. Huh? I'm tired of the devil huh? wrestling with you. Huh? I'm tired of the enemy huh? affecting your mind. Huh? I'm tired of you looking like huh? and acting like your cuckoo. Huh? But I got a word for you. Huh? If you keep your mind, huh? stay on me. Huh? If you keep your mind, huh? focus on me. Huh? I'm going to keep it in perfect peace. Huh? I want you to know huh, that if you drink of this water, huh, that the God I serve huh, will bring you out huh, of every mess. Huh? I'm preaching to somebody. Huh? After all of this, huh, he begins to tell them, huh, I am the resurrection. Huh? I am the light. Huh? I come to die huh, that you might have life. Huh? Y'all hear my story. Huh? When they took him to the cross huh, and hammered the nails in his hands huh, and hammered the nails in his feet, huh, they should have left them on the ground. Huh, but they messed up huh, when they lifted the cross. Huh. He said, if I huh, be lifted, huh, if I huh, be lifted, huh, 
if I be lifted from the earth, I draw all men unto me. He was calling my name. He was saying, Sebastian, come on down. He was breathing my name. Sebastian, come on down. So, come on out of it. Call in your name. You better give some praise. I'm glad he called my name. I'm saved. Sanctified. Holy Ghost still. I got a drink. And it keeps on bubbling. It's bubbling up out of my soul. I can't be still. I got to tell my story. I've been created to worship. I've been created to praise him. I'm not going to get up and tell the Lord, thank you. Oh, Lord. I praise you. Oh, Lord. I glorify you. Oh, God. I glorify you. Before you see it, go to two people. And if you got the strip, to go to the third one and say, Everyone that drinks of this water shall never thirst again. I will give the water that I will give them, they will never be thirsty. This is the living water of new life, new possibilities, and freedom from your past. Somebody ought to say, thank God that I've been freed from my past. I better believe what y'all got to say it. I'll thank God. I've been free from my past. Say it one more time. Thank God. I've been free from my past. <laughs> that living water that you need to drink of, amen. Is that living water from that you need to drink of? Is coming from is Jesus' own life. Uh, ooh. Uh, you know what's amazing? You know what, Kevin, you know what's amazing? When they hung him and the blood started coming out of his hands and it was dropping on the ground, when they put it, that crown of thorns, and they jammed it on his head and, and water, and excuse me, and blood kept coming out of him. But you know when that centurion took his sword. When they took that sword and they pierced him in his side. Blood and water. You need a drink. Blood and water came out of him. And then, when he finished with the group that was in at the well, Jacob's well, when he finished. Jesus does something that I'm going to do to you right now. He instructs his disciples. He says, go into Jerusalem and all of Judea and in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. That's your call. That's what that water causes you to do. To go tell somebody about what God has done in your life. Somebody want to get up and tell the Lord, I'm ready. I'm ready. I want to be used by you. Stand.
stand up all over this building. Look down your row and say, you need a drink. And we're not talking about that man-made stuff. We're talking about the stuff that made coming off the cross that's going to help you to be delivered. Is there one that has not gone down in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins? If you're here, we have water, we have clothing, we have all of the things necessary for you to walk in the newness of God. You need to go down in Jesus' name. You need the covering of the water, which specifies and comes to show us that it is a watery grave. Then you need to be filled. And I'm telling you, so many times we think that because we're baptized and that's enough, that even though you've gone down and God has buried you, if you do not find something to be filled with, if the Holy Ghost does not come in you, the enemy finds a way to fill you back up with the stuff that you once tried to lose. That's why it's important that you get the Holy Ghost. Speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God give up. It's important because it continues to keep you. That when you try to step out of the way, it's the Holy Ghost. Somebody scream, the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost that pulls you back in. Is there a witness in the house? It's the Holy Ghost. And as you grow with the Holy Ghost, it's not about speaking in tongues only. That is just the initial sign. But when you get it, you get it by your God. When you get it, the Bible says that you will develop other fruit that will grow with you. They're not just fruit for you to show off how pretty they look. It is a fruit and gifting to bless the house of God. To bless other men and women to come and be a part of this work. To tell them that God changes your life. Somebody ought to say, yes, Lord, I need help right now. I'm struggling with myself. I'm struggling with my mind. I'm struggling with my body. I need some help from you. And God, if you help me, I know I'll come through this with victory.